Welcome to an introduction to Parkinson's disease. I'm Brian McGuinness, a Parkinson's disease clinical nurse specialist. And over the next few minutes, I hope to help you learn a little bit more about Parkinson's disease. This presentation has been created for people with Parkinson's disease, their friends and family, or anyone who's interested in knowing a little bit more about Parkinson's. My aim is to help you to understand a little bit more about what causes Parkinson's, how it is diagnosed and the treatments involved. And I hope, after looking at this presentation, that you will know a little bit more about Parkinson's and maybe be inspired to learn more. Over the next few minutes, we'll explore the causes, symptoms, diagnosis and treatment of Parkinson's disease. In particular, we will look at one of the long-term effects of the use of levodopa, the gold standard treatment in Parkinson's therapy. Parkinson's disease is named after James Parkinson the first person to describe and publish an account of this condition. He described it as the shaking palsy back in 1817. Today, we refer to Parkinson's disease as Parkinson's or simply as PD. Parkinson's affects people from all walks of life. It affects men and women of any particular age, but usually the most common age is between 50 and 70 years. One of the main factors required for normal body movement is the production of dopamine, a neurochemical transmitter produced by cells in the brain. Dopamine is stored in the nerve endings and when a signal is required, dopamine moves from one nerve ending to the next and hence a body movement can take place, like moving a muscle. In people with Parkinson's disease, these brain cells lose the ability to produce enough dopamine required for normal movement. When the majority of these brain cells have been lost, the symptoms of Parkinson's disease come out. Scientists are still not entirely sure why these dopamine cells lose the ability to produce the chemical. Some believe that it's an inherited susceptibility to developing Parkinson's disease. Others feel that it's something in the environment that triggers the condition, like toxins or viral infections, but it's still not entirely understood. James Parkinson described this condition as the shaking palsy, or as most healthcare professionals call it, tremor. But not everyone with Parkinson's disease develops a tremor. Other symptoms that occur may be muscle stiffness, slowness in movement, and the change in way somebody walks. As a result, the person may develop shuffling steps, freezing of gait, and sometimes falling. The person's quality of life can be affected from the day-to-day -day activities that they need to do like, for instance, washing, dressing, buttoning, tying their laces, or even their handwriting may change. The symptoms of Parkinson's usually come on over time. They develop slowly over many years. They can be described as motor symptoms related to movement and non-motor symptoms not related to movement. But we have to remember each patient with Parkinson's is unique and develops an array of symptoms quite uniquely and individually. The motor symptoms of Parkinson's disease are the most obvious. They include muscle stiffness, tremor or shaking, slowness of movement and a change in the way somebody walks. The non-motor symptoms of Parkinson's are less obvious but just as troublesome. They include sweating, anxiety, constipation, low mood and panic attacks. We will look at some of those symptoms in more detail later on in this presentation. 